Hello everyone. Today in the respiration in plants, we are going to discuss the TCA cycle. TCA cycles means it stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle. This tricarboxylic acid cycle which generally occur in matrix of mitochondria. This is the another cycle is here in which we are going to discuss the conversion of glucose to the different molecules to release the energy. If you remember in the previous video we discussed about the glycolysis in which we discussed that the glucose will convert into the pyruvic acids and this pyruvic acids formations represent here that the partial oxidation of glucose has been occurred. Now we are going to continue this cycle from the pyruvic acids and we will see the different molecules formations here in the cycle known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Let's start now TCA cycle. We will continue our cycle from the pyruvic acid Pyruvic acid which is generally 3 carbon compounds. So we will mention the number of carbon in the bracket here. This pyruvic acids it will convert into acetyl coenzyme A. And this acetyl coenzyme A is a 2 carbon compound. Now if any 3 carbon compound is converted into the 2 carbon compound, there will be loss of 1 carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. So it will come out from the reaction and there is a reduction of NAD positive into NADH2. Again, because there is an addition of coenzyme A, so in the reaction, we will add here coenzyme A. So normally, this pyruvic acid which has been formed during the glycolysis, it will continue or it will shift from the cytoplasms to the mitochondrial matrix. Pyruvic acid which is a 3 carbon compound, it will convert into acetyl coenzyme A which is a 2 carbon compound. So now the 1 carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide and this NADA positive will get reduced into the NADH2. This whole reaction it is known as the oxidative decarboxylation. Oxidative decarboxylation. Now this acetyl coenzyme A will be accepted by 4 carbon compound which is known as oxaloacetic acid. So this one stands for oxaloacetic acid which is generally a 4 carbon compound. It will convert into citric acid. This citric acid will become 6 carbon compound because 2 carbon are coming from the acetyl coenzyme A and the 4 carbon is from oxaloacetic acid. So oxaloacetic acid and acetyl coenzyme A when they will react they will form here citric acid which is a 6 carbon compound. Now we have to mention the name of the enzyme here which is responsible for the formation of citric acid. So the name of the enzyme is citrate synthetase. This is the name of the enzyme which you need to remember. Now this citric acid, it will convert into isocitrate. Isocitrate 
is also a six carbon compound. So the number of carbon remains same in the citric acid and isocitrate. It is a generally isomer of the citric acid. So the formation of isocitrate. Now this isocitrate will convert into alpha ketoglutarate. And this alpha ketoglutarate is a 5 carbon compound and I have already told you that wherever there is a loss of carbon it will always come out in carbon dioxide and where there is a formation of carbon dioxide there will be reduction of NAD positive into NADH2. So generally this isocitrate which is a 6 carbon compound getting converted into 5 carbon compound known as alpha ketoglutarate and this one carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide and there will be reduction of NAD positive into NADH2. Now this alpha ketoglutarate which is a 5 carbon compound will convert into a 4 carbon compound which is known as succinyl coenzyme A. So this succinyl coenzyme A which is a 4 carbon compound. Again there is a change of carbon from 5 carbon to 4 carbon. So there will be loss of 1 carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. There is a formation of succinyl coenzyme A. So we need to add in the reaction coenzyme A. And when there is a formation of carbon dioxide definitely it is a reduction reaction. So there will be reduction of Na. D positive into NADH2. So this alpha ketoglutarate which was 5 carbon compounds converted into succinyl coenzyme A which is a 4 carbon compound and the 1 carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide and because of the reduction reaction that is NAD positive into NADH2. Now this succinyl coenzyme A further convert into 4 carbon compound which is succinic acid. This succinic acid is also a 4 carbon compound. So there is no change in the number of carbon because succinyl coenzyme A is also 4 carbon compound and succinic acid is also a 4 carbon compound. But if you see here this coenzyme A it will come out from the reaction. So there is a release of coenzyme A and there is conversion of this GDP into GTP, guanosine diphosphate into guanosine triphosphate and this guanosine triphosphate indirectly will form ATP, adenosine triphosphate which is a currency of energy. After the formation of the succinic acid, now there will be formation of fumarate. This fumarate is also a 4 carbon compound. So again there is no change in the number of carbon. But here the reduction of a new compound is there which is Fa. D positive will convert into FADH2. Up to now we have seen only the reduction of NAD positive into NADH2 but when there is a formation of fumarate from the succinic acid there will be reduction of uh, FAD positive into FADH2. Nothing is changed in the NADH and FADH. Generally there is a formation of ATP which will differ in NAD. H2 and FADH2 that we will discuss later on that how many ATP will form from one NADH2 and from how many will form from the FADH2. But here now the formation of fumarate now we are going to form malate. Malate is also a 4 carbon compound and after this malate there 
it will convert into oxalic acid which is again a 4 carbon compound so there is no change in the number of carbon but when this malate will get converted into oxaloacetic acid again there is a reduction of NAD positive into NADH2 so now after discussing this whole cycle we have to summarize this cycle and we need to understand that how many ATPs are going to form I told you here that if we talk about the direct ATP which has been formed from the GTP that is only one but if we have to just count the number of ATP which has been formed indirectly and which can be encached later on from the compound which is known as the NADH2 and FADH2 so that we are going to discuss here so if I just need to write here the NADH2 you have to remember that one NADH2 is worth for 3 ATP and 1 FADH2 is worth for 2 ATP. So in the Krebs cycle, wherever you see NADH2, you need to see there that from this 1 NADH2, we will get the 3 ATPs. And from 1 FADH2, we will get only the 2 ATP. This is the basic difference between these two. Now, if we need to count this number of NADH2, which has been formed during the tricarboxylic acid cycles. So, one thing you need to be careful here. You will not count this NADH2, which has been formed during the oxidative decarboxylation. Actual cycle will start from here, when your acetyl coenzyme A will be accepted by the oxaloacetic acid. So remember this whenever you are counting the NADH2, you are not supposed to count this one. You will just directly count the NADH2 which has been formed during this whole cycle. So let's start counting this. The one NADH2 has been formed over here. Second NADH2 is here and the third NADH2 is when mallet is converted into oxaloacetic acid. So in a one crab cycle, if we just we need to see here. How many NADH2 has been formed? That is 3 NADH2. It means that it is worth for how many ATP? That is 9 ATP. And how many FADH2 has been formed? That is only 1 FADH2. So we will write here that 1 FADH2 is going to form 2 ATP during the Krebs cycle. And how many direct ATP will form from Krebs cycle. So we will see here the direct ATP is only 1. So the total number of ATP if we see here that is 12 ATPs. How many ATPs are going to form from 1 pyruvic acid? So from 1 pyruvic acid I am going to write here PA for that. From 1 pyruvic acids we are going to get the 12 ATP. But from one glucose molecules, we will get two pyruvic acid. So from two pyruvic acid, we are going to get here the total number of ATP that is 24. This you need to remember here. From one pyruvic acid, 12 ATP. From one glucose, how many ATP pyruvic acids are going to form that is 2 pyruvic acids so the number of ATP is going to be double that is 24 ATP. Here the cycles which we have explained here that we are, have discussed only the one molecule of pyruvic acids but if we are discussing the one glucose so one glucose will always form here the two molecules of the pyruvic acids and these two pyruvic acids are always going to form the total number of ATPs that is 24. So let's recall our cycle once again. We started our cycle from the pyruvic acid and it has been formed by the partial oxidation of glucose in the cytoplasm by the process known as the glycolysis. This pyruvic acids will get converted into acetyl coenzyme A which is a two carbon compound. So the one carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide. There is addition of coenzyme A and the reduction of NAD positive into NADH2. This whole reaction is known as the oxidative 
decarboxylation after the formation of acetyl coenzyme a when it will enter into the matrix of mitochondria it will accepted by the four carbon compound which is known as oxaloacetic acid in the presence of enzyme citrate synthetase there will be formation of six carbon compound which is known as the citric acid so the two carbon from the acetyl coenzyme a four carbon from the oxaloacetic acid and there is a formation of citric acid which is a six carbon compound this six carbon compound will convert into its isomer form which is known as the isocitrate in the presence of an enzyme which is known as the isocitrate after this six carbon compound isocitrate will gets converted into five carbon compound which is known as the alpha keto glutarate again this one carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide and there will be reduction of nad positive into nadh2 five carbon compound will form four carbon compound which is known as the succinyl coenzyme a so for the formation of this succinyl coenzyme a we will add here the coenzyme a and this because there is a loss of one carbon so this one carbon will come out in the form of carbon dioxide and the reduction of nad positive into nadh2 this succinyl coenzyme a will continue now and it will form the succinic acid which is again four carbon compounds so the no carbon dioxide will form afterward and there is a coming out of coenzyme a now when the succinyl coenzyme a will convert into succinic acid we'll see here the formation of gtp from the gdp and from this gdp gtp which is going to see triphosphate will indirectly form the atp which is a currency of energy now this succinic acid will gets converted into fumarate again this is also a four carbon compound but to for this reaction we need the reducing uh, compound here which is a fad positive that will convert into the fadh2 this fumarate will convert into malate which is again four carbon compound and will forms the oxaloacetic acid which was the first four carbon compound who has accepted this acetyl coenzyme a now we will discuss some standard form of nadh2 so nadh2 stands for nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide and fadh2 stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide so they can ask you the standard form of these two so you need to remember that so this was our tca cycle which is known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle thank you so much